Hey, Dr. <clears throat> Dr. Goldberg here, continuing our internal medicine uh, bullet points. So today we're going to talk about shock. This is going to be an important uh, topic for you when you're working in the emergency room or if you're working in prompt care and you're seeing an adult in shock uh, with persistent hypotension um, that's significant, uh, often associated with tachypnea or um, tachycardia. But you got to know the differential diagnosis quickly. And you want to think about these things uh, as you're walking into the room, as you're in seeing the patient, as you're interviewing their family or whatever. Number one, cardiovascular shock, uh, something you got to be aware of. Obviously, the history is going to point to it. If there's associated pulmonary edema, if there's been a pulmonary embolus, um, it's affecting cardiac function, EKG chemical enzyme elevations, uh, troponin, MB fraction, etc. Pretty straightforward. Number two, neurogenic or cerebral vascular, an acute uh, hemorrhagic uh, stroke or a, a significant increase in edema uh, of the brain will obviously cause significant hypotension sometimes and you have to be aware of that if there's focal neurological signs. Number three, septic shock. So the patient who presents with an acute abdomen or who has fever, hypothermia, leukocytosis or leukopenia in the setting of uh, an acute meningitis, pneumonia, acute belly, uh, an, an acute uh, fasciitis. Global looking at the patient, observing the patient, taking a quick history and physical. Fourth uh, cause of shock is endocrine shock or Addisonian shock, where the uh, patient is not producing enough uh, excuse me, cortisone. Uh, these patients might have abdominal pain. They might have fever as well. They're often going to have electrolyte imbalance with hyponatremia and hyperkalemia, something to watch for. Fifth cause of shock is anaphylactic shock. So somebody who's been exposed to uh, hornets or wasp sting, stings, bee stings, some type of an anaphylaxis with a food intake. Uh, Got to be uh, aware of anaphylactic shock. Lastly, and probably most commonly, would be hypovolemic shock, so associated with dehydration, uh, obviously azotemia in the setting of uh, renal insufficiency, or hemorrhagic shock associated with profound anemia uh, in the setting of circulatory collapse. So. So those are the six causes of shock that you need to think about right away. There might be one or two of them going on at the same time. So think about those six causes of shock when you see somebody with profound hypotension. Thank you, Dr. Goldberg, signing off.